Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Does anyone else have any needs? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, keep her in your, our prayers. All right. Anybody else? Yes, uh, little Tyler's sick again, so keep him in your prayers as well. Christina's home with him tonight, Brother East. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes, a lot of sickness going around. So it's, uh, let's pray against the sickness as a whole. It seems like it's going in circles. So. Anybody else? Sister Betsy. before the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you for the opportunity to gather in your presence again tonight, Lord. We claim your anointing and blessings on this service, Lord. And help us remember uh, after these holidays the true reason for the season, God, for you come to this earth for the sole purpose to spread your love and pay the ultimate sacrifice, God. We ask you to touch each and every need, Lord. Touch the youth as they go to Nashville, Jesus. Let them get a renewing and anointing like they've never had before, Jesus. Ignite them and ignite this generation, Lord, to represent you, God. Touch every need in here, Lord, all the sickness going around, God. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus, Lord. We claim your anointing and your healing, Lord, on every person here, Jesus. God, and as you anoint the singers and the preacher tonight, Lord, let us receive the word you have for us, God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. God, we praise you, Lord. God, we thank you, Jesus. As we lift up our hands, we are meet us here. As we call on your name. Holy, holy is He. 
you meet us here as we call on your name will you meet us here we have come to this place to worship you god of mercy and grace it is you we adore it is you our praises are for only you the heavens focus upon you Lord God in your splendor Lord in your grace and your mercy beautiful Savior hallowed Savior Lord oh thank you Lord Jesus God we praise you Lord God we lift you up God we magnify you we glorify you Jesus God God we exalt you oh Hosanna thank you God we praise you Lord
couple of announcements tonight about the youth trip. Tomorrow, um, after service, there's going to be a short meeting for the chaperones. If you're chaperoning on the trip, make sure you meet with Skylar Hunt after service. And also, if you don't know, the buses are departing tomorrow at 12 o'clock. Brother Terry, would you pray over the offering? Let's continue to worship tonight.
Yes, he is. Come on, sing it to him. Oh, hallelujah. Here I am to worship. That's what I'm here for. What about you? is trying to touch somebody's heart right now. Let him talk to you right now. Yes, you are. Hallelujah. He's wonderful to you. Clap your hands to the Lord. He's such a wonderful God. I love you, Jesus. God we serve tonight. Amen. I love what I feel and he is good to me. God is great to me. How many had a great Christmas? Raise your hand. Amen. If you were breathing, you had a great Christmas. Amen. That's, that's what it's a good way to look at. Praise God. I give you a uh, the youth will be standing here tonight. They're going to be gone for three or four days with a lot of youth activities and preaching going on and so we're going to let them stay in here tonight but we do have MIT class and children's church about to happen they can be dismissed tonight if they want to be praise the Lord so I get to preach to the youth tonight and I want to brag on our youth a little bit though um, they went out on a trip uh, something like they're going on this weekend and they was at a certain place and somebody bought all of their lunch because they were being so good said he never saw a youth group act so good and that this person bought the whole group's youth uh, lunch. Let's give our youth a hand. So with that being said, I hope they come back with another lunch ball this weekend. Praise God. And so we know how to act as Christians as we go out of town and because you're representing God, number one, but then you're representing your body here of, of the bride here at the church. So Amen. If you've got your Bibles, I want you to go to Isaiah, a very familiar chapter I want to read in our text tonight is Isaiah 40 and 31, and we're going to read that, but it was a uh, great service this past Sunday. We missed a lot of you that might have been out of town or, or, or Christmas uh, visiting or whatever you might have been doing, but we missed you, but we did have a great time this past Sunday worshiping the Savior of the world, but how many knows he's, he's still Savior of the world tonight? Even though it's not Christmas, praise the Lord, he's still our Savior. But it's good to see everybody back in the house of the Lord tonight. We did miss you Sunday if you wasn't here, though. Isaiah 40, 31, one verse. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Then I'm going to go to Luke chapter 24, verse number 49. Luke 24, 49. And it also is good to have some, uh, a visitor with us tonight. Steve, it's good to have you tonight, my friend. God bless you. And uh, I, see, well, I guess that's all the visitors. We really, that's the first time being here. Well, it's Sister Patton. You're really not a visitor. We're just going to claim you as a part-timer sometimes when you're in town. But it's good to have her always when she's here. But Luke 24 and 49, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Amen. Lay your Bibles down behind you and uh, to say with me, say, Brother Hunt, preach an hour and a half if you want to. Thank you. I might do that. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You can be seated tonight. I do cover you. I feel the Lord has given me to. Don't cut me off, Brother Shacker. I will fire you or, and not give you a raise that you think you're going to get. Praise the Lord. But tonight I would like to cover your prayers because I feel a message for us tonight. Here it is, December the 27th, 2017. And I feel 
maybe I'm the only one here tonight, which I doubt it, but I feel like I have not accomplished what I set out to do in 2017. I feel like I had high goals in January, but by March or maybe August, by mid-August or somewhere around there, I kind of uh, kind of slacked off, maybe not really uh, quitting, but you know, just, well, I can't get there, so I'm just going to kind of float my way through it. You know, one of those deals. And sometimes I feel like we, uh, as, as humans, we get to that point of just barely making it. Well, I'm not going to get to my goals, so what's the use? But I want to title tonight just simply, Why Wait? Because I think sometimes we think in our mind about this time of the year. I, I heard somebody say this the other day, and that's what really gave me my thought. My title was this. They said, I'm not going to start my diet to after Christmas because I ain't even going to try through all Christmas time and all the ham and the bread and the potatoes and the, the desserts. And I mean, I'm not even going to try. So I'm just going to eat like a pig through Christmas, and then January I'll start my diet. And sometimes that's what we do, but I just wonder if I can just ask tonight the question, why wait on 2018? Why, we, we still have tonight's service, and this is what I always like at the end of the year. I like to be at every service in January or December because I got a lot of catching up to do that I hadn't done through the year. And so, so tonight, tonight is the last wish tonight of the year, of 2018. There's not going to be another, I mean 17. There's not going to be another Wednesday night service between now and next year. And then Sunday is going to be our last service of the year. There will not be a service left of 2017. We will not be able to look back and say, well, when I get in this situation, no, 17 is going to be gone after Sunday's morning service. We're going to be out of here. No more 17. And by the way, I just need to go ahead. I should have announced it already, but uh, we had a, a New Year's Eve service planned. But they're calling for bad weather to come in uh, Sunday night. So we will get all of our service in on Sunday morning and not have a Sunday night service. I know some of you are going to be mad at me about not coming at 1030 and staying until 1 o'clock. But uh, I feel like it would be safer not to have a later night service because of the weather. And uh, those of you who are amen to me, you need to pray through and get the Holy Ghost again. Okay? I'm talking to this guy back here waving his arm. Praise the Lord. Picking at him tonight. But anyway, we, we are in a time that we feel like I got all the time in the world left. Really and truly we don't. You may feel like way well, you young men that's sitting here on the front row that's in your teen, early teen years and you feel like you're young, you got the world ahead of you, your life ahead of you. Really you don't. Young ladies, you we don't know what tomorrow brings. We don't know how much of 2018 we're going to get to enjoy or or even if we're going to make it to 2018. So my title tonight would be simply why wait. Throughout the Old Testament, you know the, the, the tabernacle story, and Brother Brad is one of the, I love to hear him talk about the tabernacle, but the tabernacle was a portable earthly meeting place to say that uh, a place with God for the children of Israel to come. And it was a time of exodus from, the, from Egypt throughout the conquering of the land of the Canaan. And so they had this little uh, portable church they took around with them. And it was a great play. I, I had an opportunity to talk to a man today, and he came in our church and he wanted to know how we was going to lay out our new church and, and different things. He says, y'all are going to have an altar. Where's your altar going to be? And, and I began to show him where the altar was going to be out there. And, and then I, I, it dawned on me, on these altars right here, I, my goal is to put them up front. When you walk into the front door, they're going to be sitting there as a, as a piece of furniture that came out of our old church. Well, brother, why is the altars going to be at the front? Because the altars were at the beginning of the tabernacle. See, we, we, sometimes we got to realize it all starts at an altar. And then you begin to get into the presence of God. That's why, I, that's why I'm coaching you as much as you can. Come pray. Come pray at the altar. Come and pray because this is where it all starts. So Israel had to wait once a year to have forgiveness for their sins. And I'm going to just give a brief def uh, definition of what they had to do. Once a year they went before the tabernacle and they let the, the priests went in and their sins were rolled ahead for one year. And that made them feel good for now. It was one of them services that you just didn't want to miss, you know, because that's the time I'm going to get my sins rolled ahead. So Isaiah said in his text, he says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, mount up with eagle wings, and shall run and not be weary, walk and not faint. And Jesus told the disciples as well, he said, Tarry with, and wait in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Now, you got to remember, he says, that, that word, you got to uh, wait until. Now, a lot of people like to use that scripture, and I learned a long time ago. Now, 
I hope this shoe doesn't fit you because if, if you get offended, it might fit you. So I hope you don't get offended what I'm about to say. But I've seen a lot of lazy people like to use Isaiah. They that wait upon the Lord. And they that wait upon the Lord. You know why? Because they don't want to move. They want to just sit and wait. Now, I don't know about you, but it would be awesome to stay at home and let them mail your check to you, wouldn't it? Not have to go to work and just wait on your check. But you know, like I know, that ain't going to happen. It just, I mean, you might get one for a sick day or whatever, and you may get blessed for that situation, but you're not going to have a check just mailed to you every day without them eventually saying, I don't need you anymore. So we've got to remember the, the tarrying part sometimes is not meant to not, not to be moving. It's not meant to just, just sit and wait on God. If God wants me to shout, he's just going to pour the Holy Ghost on me. He probably won't ever pour it on you then. See, people say, when I was growing up, that's how, that was the way they said it. Well, I ain't going to worship God until I feel it, bless God. Well, you probably won't ever feel it. See, my Bible says for us to leap for joy. So, in other words, I got I to gotta react to something. I got to get up and give God the praise. He also says, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. I can't wait on Brother Brent to hit the right chord. Can't wait on Brother Hunt to say the right words. And, but I've got to find myself a time that I can just praise him i can't wait on that so many times we want to wait until the right moment so it seems that there was a lot of waiting that went on in the old testament if you go back and read it it was it's an amazing book to read you can find some different uh ways if they waited a lot throughout the old testament and waiting is to remain inactive this is what waiting is if you look up the word waiting it is to remain inactive or in a state of response uh, as until something expected happens. So, so many times people just waiting for somebody else to do their work. And we talk about the government system, you know, we, we get aggravated sometimes and we say, well, these people that are, are just as capable as I am, they're sitting there waiting and I'm out here having to work and I'm having to get, you know, it's basically the same way inside the church though. We come in and we are trying to live on the government uh, of God of his shoulders instead of waiting on God to pour out all the stuff that we really need instead of us just getting up and giving God the praise and moving forward. Sometimes God says when we begin to lift our hands and the praises go up, guess what's going to happen? The glory is going to start coming down. It's only so long that you can pray before you don't get into the spirit. Come on, if you'll keep praying, eventually that spirit's going to come and it's going to fall on you. It might take you 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes of praying. But I'm going to tell you, these five-minute prayer meetings need to be over with. We need to get back into travailing prayer meetings. And by the way, the, uh, just go ahead and plug it in. You're going to hear it all Sunday. But in, uh, we're going to have 31 days of prayer and fasting in January. Are you all ready? These things come by praying and fasting. What things, Brother Hunt, when we cast out devils? I don't know about you guys, but I'm tired of having church with the devil. Everybody tired of having church with the devil? Come on, we, we, we let him get comfortable. We, you know, we, when I was growing up, there's a lot of things that's going on in churches today that they would call them to the front and lay Bibles on them, cast oil all over them because of the evilness that was over them. But nowadays, we, we give a membership role and say, hey, as long as you pay your tithes, you're good. And that's not true, guys. We got we to get those spirits that are attacking our churches out of our, our systems. But these things come by praying and fasting. So we'll be talking about fasting uh, Sunday, and we're going to follow a fast format that I feel is going to be good for the church. So make sure you're here Sunday to hear that. And I believe it's going to be good, especially when 31 days of no Facebook. That's going to be awesome. Praise God. That's going to be so awesome. 31 days, no Facebook. Hallelujah. Could you imagine the least gossiping you hear in 31 days? Could you imagine not knowing who's going to be sick when they come to church and ain't going to bother you a bit? You're just going to come on, come. Y'all know what I'm talking about. People put all over Facebook, oh, I'm sick tonight. <coughs> you don't come because you don't want to catch their cold. Or, or somebody puts on Facebook, well, I, I, I was over here over the weekend. and Well, why wasn't they at church? They should have been at church. And all these things start rolling up. 31 days of no Facebook. Could you imagine? Somebody said, I'd rather have no food and no Facebook. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do 31 days. Not one week, not, not 20 days, but 31 days. I believe if you make 31 days without Facebook, you might do 12 months. What do y'all think? 
Man, I'm getting, I'm meddling right now, aren't I? A lot of you guys get quiet on me right now. I had somebody tell me one time, that's the only way I can connect, Brother Hunt, so I'm not going to fast. So they rejected what the pastor said. And these guys are supposed to be in the ministry. And they rejected what I asked them to do. And guess what? They have been paying for some things in their life. Friend, you got to get these things come by praying and fasting. we got to reach them. Hey, there's, there's other ways. Facebook ain't been out in this world forever. Can I hear amen? There, there's, there's still phones you can call on. There's still letters you can write and put a stamp on them and send them off. And you get this letter. Everybody know what a letter is? You know, some young people don't even know how to write a letter nowadays. Y'all know that? When I was in the third grade, I had to know how to write a letter, how to put a stamp on it, how to send it off. When I was in the fourth grade, I had to learn how to write a check. Now, nowadays, they don't know how to write a check. You see, we, we're, we're throwing all that stuff out the window, but we're trading it for uh, things that we can't... You know what the world don't want to do? The world don't want you, young people, he don't want you to connect like we're connecting right now. He don't want you to talk one-on-one. -on -one. He'd rather you Snapchat so it'd disappear in about 30 minutes or, what, 10 seconds, right? 10 seconds, it disappears. So you can Snapchat... Uh, I'm saying the wrong word, aren't I? Snapchat a, a picture of yourself... To your boyfriend, half naked, boom, it's gone in 10 seconds. Nobody sees it, nobody knows it, but guess what? God saw it. That's, that's really the main one that matters. And in case you don't know, also, somebody else that might be on your Snapchat, they can snap it real fast, and they got a permanent picture of you on their, face, on their Snapchat. See, a lot of you don't know what Snapchat is. I don't even know how to operate either. I just know a little bit about it. But I want to tell you this. Uh, the world is trying to break away the connection of the church. If I can, I'm going to tell you, we don't fellowship like we used to. We, we don't connect like we used to. We, we connect with people outside of the world more than we do inside the church. We, t we connect with people that's not even claiming to be a Jesus name person more than we do people inside. Be why? Because we're too busy to take the time off to, hey, let's go after church and go out and eat. Let's go over here and, and, and do this. Let's talk a little bit. Let's come to my house. I go to your house because we get busy in our lives. So anyway, that's, that's not in my lesson tonight, but that, I thought that just sounded pretty good to put out there. But, but it seems like today, I believe it just blows my mind. This is what I found out. And I, I've used this statement before, I think, here at the church. And, uh, but it blows my mind of the average that a person waits in their lifetime. You, you guys, I don't know about you, but did you realize in your lifetime, an average lifetime of a person, you spend five years waiting. I'm talking about waiting in lines, waiting in gas pumps, waiting here and there. Five years of waiting. You're, to me, that's a waste of time on waiting. I, I don't know about you. I must say, I, I, I am... I am spoiled to a fast-paced life. I like to move fast. I mean, I like to get things done. If, 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 if I don't see something moving or something happening, I've seen something's wrong. It, something's dead. And it really is. If you go to a, a pond somewhere and the water's not moving and the water's not uh, going, it, it gets stagnant and it starts stinking. So to me, I feel like you ought to be moving. I think by nature, I'm a very, uh, be honest with you, I think I'm a very impatient person. Now, some of you probably can sit at a red light for 30 minutes, but I want to know what's wrong with this stupid red light. <laughs> Something's wrong with this stupid red light. I don't know about you. I've ran a red light before because it was like, it's not going to change. And about the time I get under it, it changes. I thought, oh, man, I was almost there. But I have. I, I've, I've went around red lights before. I went turn a right and then make a U-turn and go back out, and it was still red. And I could tell you a few here in town that they need to work on. It seems like they take forever. But I'm just a very impatient person. I don't like to wait around with nothing to do. I mean, even when I'm standing in that long waiting line at Walmart, you know, uh, I mean, you don't have a lot of lines to choose from, three of them. So, you, got, you know, you pick the one. And, and I am always, always pick the one who the little old lady in front of me is counting with pennies and she's having a dollar to go. And, and I'm picking those lines. You know, you go to a restaurant and... And Brother John, you appreciate this. You go to a restaurant, you're standing in line, you really got somewhere to be, something to do, and, and this guy in front of you is ordering for the whole work place. And he's ordering, I got 16 menus here to go. And I'm thinking, oh God, what have I done? And you look out and you pull up in a restaurant. Sometimes the, the line's around the door. You say, well, I get faster going inside. And you get inside and, and they're, about, you're, they're standing there just talking and act like they don't even see you standing there wanting to be served. Now, those kind of things make me just get all out of whack because I am a very impatient person. I don't like waiting. Now, some of you may like waiting. That's why uh, I can't go fishing a lot of times. 
Because if that fish ain't biting a hook, I'm ready to go swimming or go home. I mean, it's just, I can't sit still that long. And I, you say, Brother Hunt, you need some medicine. I don't know. I, I, maybe I do. I don't know. But, but the fact is, I just don't like waiting. I don't like sitting around if there's something that needs to be done either. I, I, I don't know how you do it. I, I don't know if I ever will learn it. If, if I'm somewhere and there's something that needs to be done and nobody else is doing it, I'm going to do it. I just, I'm just that type of person. I, I don't see how people can sit and watch everybody else work. It's just like, I, I just, it ain't in me, but some people can. It's just, uh, I mean, it doesn't bother them a bit to see people pass by them working hard and whatever they're doing on Facebook or something. But to me, it's just, it's wasted time. I'm wasted, but you know, I'm getting somewhere. Y'all stay with me for a minute tonight. But the fact is, my spiritual gift, I really believe, is, is impatience. I'm just impatient sometimes. But with this in mind, let me just say, I always, always seem to pick the slowest line. I mean, I, I'm even in the traffic line, you know, and I, this traffic is slow, and I said, well, I'm going to get over it. Then lo and behold, if this lady don't slow down, and I, and I just, it just seems like that's the way it goes. It feels like sometimes it's the devil working on my mind, trying to get me frustrated, and, and it's just one of those things that, that you just don't like to wait. Is anybody with me tonight? Everybody else like to wait? I just don't like to wait. When I, when I go into a store, I try to find the shortest line. I like it when they, when they open the other line up and the little old lady steps out and says, I can help the next customer. And man, I'm like running over buggies, getting over there trying to get, you know, somebody, they didn't hear, I was listening, you know. But, but I want to preach just for a minute tonight if I can. Why wait? Why wait? You know, I know the scripture says, wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord, you know. But, but there is certain laws of waiting. I believe that there were all, that probably, that most of us have to abide by. You know, you have to abide by some of the law. I'm talking about the literal laws that are out here in the land. You do have to abide if you don't, you, you get tickets. You have to abide by the laws of the, of the red light. You have to wait until that dude turns green. And if you get caught, like I did, run through it, you get a speeding ticket. Uh, if you, you know, you know. You have to wait on different things, and you have to wait on your turn. I mean, if you go in Walmart and you just bust up in about in between fifteen or twenty people, and say, "Hey, I ain't waiting my turn. You guys get back here." No, you probably leave out with a with a broken leg or a black eye, or or because people get very mad when you break in line. So sometimes there's laws that we just have to wait on. But I mean to be honest, my friend, tonight you don't you don't get tired uh, of just. Uh, running and getting stuff done but you get tired of waiting to me that's one of the most tiresome things you can do i mean think about it. how many goes to a doctor's office and when you leave after waiting four hours you just feel so refreshed no you feel tired it's like man my body's wore out i done sat there all i'm more tired sitting in a doctor's office than i was if i was out cutting grass or something so we don't like waiting and i believe that there is a time that we have to wait but when you're coming to god Listen to this now. When you come into God, there's no more waiting. You don't have to wait no more. Back in the Old Testament, they had to wait until it came their time around. But since Jesus came into, into the uh, cycle, that law of waiting was over with. You see, when Jesus got into it, that, that law was broken. And all, all through the pages, like I said, of the Old Testament, for years and years, the people were waiting on something better to come. Something better. They were waiting for a better promise. They were waiting for some better system of things to happen. They were, they were waiting for a Savior, what they were really waiting for. I like what Hebrews 7 and 19 says. It says, For the law made nothing perfect, but the, but the bringing in of the better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. It came that. Heidi's glad for the hope that we have nowadays, that we can lean on Christ. All through the Old Testament, they were hoping for a better way, longing for a better way. But I want to tell you tonight, you uh, don't have to wait no more. That waiting is over. The, the person who really wants Jesus in their life, you don't have to wait for it no more. So many times we'll say, I'm just going to wait on the Lord. You really don't have to wait on Him. All God wants us to do is just to wait, make up in our mind, this is what I want. I want to live for Him. I want to love Him. I want to worship Him. You don't have to wait. How many ever said these things, these words? When God does such and such, I'm going to do such and such. In other words, you put God on a, on a table and you said, God, I'm going to wait on you. And God is saying, I'm really waiting on you. 
If when you move, I'm going to move. And I believe this is where we're at today. God's not going to push none of us into living for Him. He's not going to make you line up with the holiness of the church. He's not going to make you. He's not going to make you start loving Him more and more and more and more. No. But you know what? Once you take that step over into the right area you should be in, God starts blessing and God starts moving. Because there's a power in when God says, I'm willing, or when you say, I'm willing, to live for God. I'm willing to live the holiness of life. Uh, I'm willing to be baptized in Jesus' name. I'm willing to pay my tithes. Then when you have that effort inside of you, God begins to pour blessings out on you. Praise God. It works every time. I, I've lived this life for many, many years, and God has smiled upon me. I, I see the blessings over how I have lived for God. Amen. And we can do it today, church. But tonight, friend, I want you to know the law of waiting was over to over 2,000 years ago. It was over. Before that time, they had to wait for a moving of God. Years ago, when God said, it's time for me to robe myself in flesh, He come to the earth, and we just got through talking about that through this Christmas season we're in. He came to the earth to save the lost. The, friend, I'm here to tell you, the waiting is over. Jesus is waiting on you tonight. He's waiting on you to move. Jesus is ready to meet your need. How many knows He can meet your need tonight? Whatever you have, He can meet it tonight. He's not waiting on, on, on uh, uh, or we're not waiting on Him. He's waiting on us. It's over tonight. For years, He was God, and He's still God. My friend, He's God all by Himself. But for years, He was a God who they could not see. They could not feel. They could not touch. They had to depend upon one man, a priest, to go before Him. To touch him, to, to make sure there was a presence there for years. But Jesus Christ came on the scene. How I many is glad he came on the scene? Hallelujah. That's what we celebrated this season because Jesus Christ came on the scene. Friend, I'm going to tell you, when he came on the scene, it changed the law of waiting. In other words, I don't have to wait until next year to get my blessing. I don't have to wait until the first of the year to start my life right out with God. Come on, some of you have been already stated in your mind, now, when January gets here, I'm going to be a better Christian. What's wrong with tonight? What's wrong with starting tonight? When January gets here, I'm not going to miss a service the whole year of 2018. What's wrong with starting tonight? I challenge you. Some of you make an uh, effort at your workplace not to be late, not to never miss an appointment, not to miss a day of work so you can get that little badge at the end of the year and get that, that support of uh, whatever they give a... Uh, 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 some whatever promotions or whatever what about if we do that for god but don't wait in 2018 how about 2017 december the 27th why wait let's make up in our mind tonight hey you said brother Hunt, i want to wait until january no 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 today is the day of salvation now is the time to to wake up out of our sleep and realize i got to make my mind up tonight i can't wait till sunday Brother Hunt, why are you so dogmatic about it? Because I know, I know between now and Monday, there's going to be all kinds of chaos in this life that we live in. And I know I may have to preach a funeral before January is over. I know it's going to happen somewhere. Maybe not nobody at this church, but maybe somebody at the church. I'm not trying to scare you tonight, but I'm, trying to, I'm just trying to be real with you tonight. Quit playing games with God and get, get on the board. Get on ship and say, I want to live for God. It's, we got we to quit saying, well, I don't think God's that kind of God. Yes, He is. He's a jealous God. He's a jealous God. He's jealous if you're doing something else besides loving Him. Think about it. Whatever else is taking place of you loving Christ, God is jealous of that. How do I love Christ? I love Christ by being faithful to Him. Come on, how do you love your wife? How do you love your husband? I love my husband and my wife because I'm faithful to them. That's how you love them, because you, you're dedicated to them. There's nobody else in your life. I'm going to tell you, spouses, your spouse would not love you near as much if you had two others on the side. It probably wouldn't float at the Hunt's house, I imagine, pretty seriously. And Come on, my wife would probably hang me and her too, but I imagine so, and she should. But I want to tell you tonight, it don't work that way with God. We got to grow up, church. We're, 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 we got to get off the milk. It's time for a steak of the word to come in our lives. Don't wait on the, the, the right time to come. When is the right time? Right now. Now is the high time to wake up out of sleep and say, God, I got to have more of you now. Now. 
The waiting is over. Jesus is waiting on us. Jesus Christ came on the scene, changing the law of waiting for someone. He was not, uh, he was not Jesus Jr. either. He wasn't some person, second person in the Godhead, suppose, or, or triune Godhead. But he was God manifest in the flesh. When he came on the scene, while he was up on the earth, he went about doing well and healing the sick and helping all those that were oppressed. He helped those when he came in touch with. Those who touched Jesus, my friend, their waiting time was over. Let, let, let me show you a few real quick. Look, look at blind Bartimaeus. We, we call him blind Bartimaeus, but really, let's look at Bartimaeus tonight because he's not blind Bartimaeus no more. But he was at this point. Blind Bartimaeus was standing on the wayside, and he would begin to yell out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And we know the story. Uh, the crowd says, you need to sit down. You need to be quiet. And the crowd got louder and louder, and so did he. He got louder. He said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And we know the story. Jesus calls for him. When he come, he dropped his, his beggar's garment. He went, and Jesus touched and healed his eyes. But I want to show you something. If he would have waited, he would have never been healed. Because that was Jesus' last time coming through that area before crucifixion. So he couldn't wait. Church, I'm going to tell you, the Spirit of the Lord is not always going to dwell with man. What if Sunday would have been our last time that we ever could feel Jesus again in our whole entire life? Would it have been a different day for us Sunday? Would we thought different Sunday? Would we have better church Sunday? Would we, would we gave more effort Sunday? What if tonight would have been the last night? Jesus says, I'm ever going to let my Holy Ghost fall on the congregation. I wonder how many would have stayed home tonight. I got a feeling if tonight was the last night, we would have had them dragging themselves into the church house. They would have had, they would, no matter how they could have got. What are you trying to say, brother? I'm trying to tell you, 2018's got to be a different day. But why wait until 2018? Let's make up in our minds tonight. I'm going to live for God come hell or high water. I'm going to trust in God come, come whatever in my way. I want to trust in Him. So, here we are. The woman with the issue of blood. Let's look at her. Here she was. She was about to give up on life because she's done been to every doctor, spent every dime she had. Does it not sound like some people you might know? They're broke. They're giving the doctors all their money. Don't know what else to do. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, when you get to that point, you probably shouldn't wait until you get to that point. But when you get to that point and don't know where else to turn to, let me encourage you. Try Jesus. Don't wait until the next doctor comes in that can give you something for free. But come on to Jesus and let Jesus give you a miracle that you need in your life. But she went through the crowd. We know the story. She didn't stay at home and say, well, if he wants to heal me, he'll heal me from right here. No, no, no. Friend, I'm going to tell you, she was in pain, and she had the issue of blood, but she pushed her way through the crowd, and when she got through that crowd, she says, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I can be made whole. And church, I'm telling you, it don't take a big show to be made whole. Everybody else was up hollering and wanting to touch him, but when she touched him, it made Jesus stop in his tracks and say, wait a minute, somebody touched me. I don't know about you, but I want to spend less time on Facebook Talking things I shouldn't talk. Spend less time on chatting or Snapchat, whatever it's called, and all that good stuff. I don't want to spend time there. And some of you may get aggravated, but I'm going to tell you, technology is ruining your life. And it's messing up your life. It's messing us up. I'm not getting a lot of amens. Probably that, that phone that you still got on to make sure nobody's going to text you right now. Guess what? That's ruining your life. It's got control over you. If you would have left that phone at home tonight, you would have turned around and went back home and got it because just in case I need it. See, we can't live without it. But church, if we could spend more time on this, uh, in the book instead of Facebook, spend more time on touching Jesus than worried about our little outside appearance of how we're going to look when we get to church. Come on. Some, oh, I can really preach right now. Y'all want me to just preach? Y'all listening so good. Oh, and I want you to brush your hair and brush your teeth, put deodorant on and dress nice, come to church, and I, I think you should wear your best. If what you got on is your best, I praise God. I'm so excited. You say, well, I don't think you have to dress. No, 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 I'm not saying dress up in a tuxedo. But let me ask you, are you coming for Jesus Christ tonight? I think you ought to put your best on. I think you ought to do. But if you spend more time on getting dressed than you do praying before service, you may have a problem. You may have a flesh problem. Because so many times we let the flesh get in our way 
Because you know what? Oh, man, y'all want me to just go ahead and preach for me? I'm talking about why I wait, okay? Come on, come on. Ah, wait. There's, there's people tonight, and I hope none of you are here tonight. These, these are probably the people that's watching, by the way, of the website. Maybe that's who you are. But you know what? If it, if it took me, okay, I can be there at 630 for prayer, or I can sit down and eat my meal first, and, and if I get done eating in time, I'll be at church. Which one should I do? Y'all, y'all tell me, what should I do? Would anybody want to, what should I do? Should I eat first, and if I make it, I'll be there on time? Or should I put the microwave, the, the dinner in the microwave and, and get to my prayer meeting, and then after church, if, if I get home in time, I'll pop the microwave on, and I think that's probably where my dinner is tonight. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to do it when I get home. But the main thing, this is me. Why are you, brother? I had a man tell me this week, this is a Baptist guy. He, he showed up on our job site here, and he's a welder. And he told me this week, he says, I, I pastor a church that runs about 80 people over in, I think he told me, somewhere in Mississippi, South Haven or somewhere. And he says, um, my, my wife got on to me the other day, and my wife says this. My wife says, why are you so hard on yourself? She says, you're hard on yourself, and you don't require it out of anybody in your church. I thought, wow. So why are you so hard on making sure that you're there in time for prayer meeting, but you don't require nobody else to be? Or you're, you're there in time to make sure we have this, but nobody else is required to do it. Church, what I want to see in 2018, when people walk in those doors, we're already having a Holy Ghost revival in the altar with people praying. Now, wouldn't that be awesome, especially if it was your kid? Or your nephew, or your sister, or your brother that's backslid, the one who got away from God. What's it going to take? These things comes by praying and fasting. 31 days of praying and fasting. We're going to do the, what the psalmist says. Early will I seek. The prayer door will be open at 6.30 every morning. From 6.30 to 9 for 31 days. I wonder how many I can get here for prayer. If you'll come at 5 o'clock in the morning, you'll see the Muslim center packed out down here with people on the mats worshiping their God. Oh, now I'm really meddling, aren't I? I hope I'm not making you feel bad. Well, yeah, I hope I am making you feel bad. Because where we're at is we're, we're waiting on the right moment. We're waiting on Pastor Hunt to make sure he calls down fire from heaven. And we're going to all get to enjoy the good goosebumps that Pastor Hunt has called down from heaven. But church, I'm going to tell you, there's not a person in this building that's not, a, not able to call down fire from heaven. But you've got to want to do it. You've got to put your mind to, to it and say, you know what? I want to pray like I never prayed. I want to fast like I never fasted. But friend, we don't have to wait until January of 2018. We got to push with everything that we got now. Now is the time to go further and further with the Lord. Just like the woman issue of blood, when she touched him, Jesus made her whole. There was a man by the pool of Bethesda. I want you to catch this. For 38 years, he waited. He said, Every year I go to that pool and I try to get there, but somebody beats me. But you see, when Jesus come on the scene at the age of 30, between 30 and 33, when Jesus came on that scene, that day, Jesus changed the law of waiting. You see, nobody could be healed until the water had been troubled. But Jesus changed the law of waiting. He says, you know what? If you want to be healed, get up, take thy bed, and go thy way. And Jesus healed that man that day. He changed the law. You don't have to wait till next year. And that's what I come to tell somebody tonight. You don't have to wait till next year to make a commitment to God tonight. Now, I know I should have saved this sermon for Sunday, and, and let's all pile in here and make rededication to God, and we're going to rededicate our lives Sunday. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have communion. There's no telling what's going to happen in this place Sunday. The Holy Ghost is going to fall. It's going to be the last Sunday of the year, but I'm going to encourage you. What do you want to happen between now and 2018? It was Caleb in Numbers chapter 13. Caleb stilled the people before Moses. And Caleb told him, says, hey, we need to go at once. And we need to go possess the land, for we're well able to overcome it. I want to tell you something tonight. Everybody here, you're well able to overcome your situation. You're well able to take over what's happening in your life today. You say, well, I'm just not what I used to be. I, I can't do what I used to do. Well, none of us can do what we used to do. But, you know, Moses said that too. Moses says, you know what, I'm as strong today as I was then. 
And I believe he was talking about his spiritual life, his, 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 uh, his strength that he had in his spirit was wanting him to go forward. But let me just, just say this today. Every day you wait, there's more giants that's being born. You hear me? Every day you wait not to make that step toward the right situation, there's another giant born. Right now, in this place, there's so many of you that, that are gifted. You've got gifts that God has given you. you, you you've, you've got things that God has put in your life, but you keep putting it off. You say, I'll do it, and you're going to wait to a later date. I'll do it then. i do it. Guess what? Every day you wait, there's another giant born. In the same way, the boys didn't go. They, they turned them down and says, no, we're not going to go. Only two, Caleb and Joshua, they want to go take the land. Do you realize how many giants were born and grew between the time that they finally went and took it out? Many giants were born. Let me preach just a little longer tonight. But, but if you need Jesus today, friend, I want to tell you, there's no waiting. You don't have to wait anymore. What are you waiting for? You don't, you're not waiting on uh, the priest anymore because Jesus is the high priest. You may have been waiting five years, 12 years, like the one with issue of blood. You may have been waiting 38 years, the man by the pool of Bethesda. But Jesus can touch you today before you leave in this place. Jesus can move into your heart and give you that very need that you need tonight. What do you need? You need healing for your body? Maybe you need to fix your messed up life. Maybe you mend, need to mend your broken heart. Can, can, you know, for some of us in this room, I think 2017 was a pretty awesome year. And we're going to talk about that Sunday with the Sunday school panel. We have regular service Sunday start at 1030, then worship service at 1130. We have a Sunday school panel. We're going to talk about the year that we've had this year and the things that's went past and, and the great things we saw taken. I think we've had a pretty good year. But some of you are probably glad to see 17 go and 18 come. Maybe you had a rough year. I don't know what your year's been like, but I'm going to tell you, it can all change in a moment of a time if you're ready for it to change. And I'm going to tell you, I can complain about it or I can just look at all the pros that happened to God. I still like the old song, all the good things outweigh the bad things. And we all can sit around and talk about the bad things of life. But you know what? God is so good to us that we, He deserves to be praised. Let's clap our hands if you believe that tonight. You don't have to wait around in line for Him to do it either. You don't have to wait until you get a better... To be a better person. I, I had a guy tell me that one day. He said, when I get to be a better person, I'm going to work for God like I ain't never worked for God. When God takes this stuff away from me, I'm going to be the man that God... And I had this, this, this elder guy. He's gone on with the Lord now. But he, he would tell me that all the time. He said, man, I could do so much for God if I was just get a little bit better. For you don't have to wait to get better to do the work for God. I'm not saying you can be a, a, a murderer and go work for God. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that none of us is perfect in this place tonight. If you had to be perfect to work for God, I wouldn't be pastor, and I promise you. But thank God, He, he has grace. He's sufficient for me. The things that I may slip up and I may, may, may think the wrong thing or say the wrong word, and, but God comes to my rescue. Thank God for His grace. Uh, my friend, if, if you need it, Jesus can do it for you to, tonight as well. What the devil took years to mess up in our lives, guess what God can do? He can fix it with just one touch. And guess what? There's no waiting. I don't have to wait. You know, us, us apostolics, we like to put people on a time frame. When, when they come to God, uh, if you're good for a year, I put you in leadership or I put you in a, this position. And friend, I'm going to tell you, that ain't the way God works. The law says it takes many days to break a habit of drinking and smoking or drugs and takes many days. But I'm going to tell you, if, if you come to God tonight, He can take away every habit in your life. He can take away, I mean, just like it. He, he, he broke that law where it says it takes days and months and years to get people off. Just like He took, uh, in Mark 5, He took a man by the name of Legion. He took him and cleaned him up. We know the story, how God cleaned him up. And the very next day, He was clothed and in His right mind. Why? Because God had touched him. The, the one who broke the law of waiting, my friend, it, it was there. It was done. And in our scripture text, they, they were told to go and wait until you, the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Ghost. He said, when it comes on you, you go wait until it falls on you. But friend, I'm going to tell you, that was the last time they had to wait for the Holy Ghost. They don't have to wait for it no more. 
They had to go wait, Terry, for 50 days. In the last 10 days, they was in a prayer meeting there. So the Holy Ghost came where they tarried, and it fell upon each of them. Church, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm thankful that I don't have to tarry and wait. Don't get me wrong. I'm now, we, we can look at it both ways. Sometimes we, we do push through the service too fast, and we don't tarry long enough for the Holy Ghost. But we don't have to uh, wait years or months or days for the Holy Ghost to come. When we walk into this place, I like what uh, many people tell me. They, we have construction workers have to cut through here sometimes and, and, and community service workers that come on Saturday mornings. I've had many of them come in here and say, Woo, I feel something in this building tonight. You know why? Because they know that somebody's been worshiping the Lord. Somebody's been magnifying because we don't have to wait on it no more. It's always right there where we need it at. And the promise is unto you, your children, and to them that are far off. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. If anything I want my grandchildren to do, I'm waiting on the day that they receive the Holy Ghost speak with, by, by speaking in tongues as God give the utterance. I, I could care less if my grandkids grow up to be an all-star baseball player. I could care less. I could care less if they grow up to be an all-star soccer player. I could care less. But I'm going to tell you, my wife and I have done set a goal in our mind. They will know about Jesus. The only way they won't know about Jesus is if they don't need a babysitter. They just throw us out. But as long as I'm babysitting, I'm going to be like Moses' mama. Boy, when he, she was babysitting him. She was telling him, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Before Easton could ever even say a word or even run around the house, I was whispering in his ear, You hear me, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. He's one Lord. I want you to know today, Easton, Jesus is one. There's one Lord. Friend, I want him to know that from day one. When Jesus came on the scene, the law of waiting was over. And I'm about ready to close tonight if music get ready to come. But Revelation 22, 17 says this. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that hears say, come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever let will, let him take the water of life freely. What he was telling you is, you don't have to wait on it. It's for you. You see, now I'm going to take a minute here tonight while the music's getting ready. You see, apostolics, we need, to, we need to change our way of thinking. And it's going to be hard to do that because some of you have been an apostolic longer than I have. I've been an apostolic for, for 30, 30 something years. And some of you have been 40, 50, 60 years. It's going to be hard for you to comprehend what I'm about to tell you. But we need to change our way of thinking. Because, see, we think that you've got to, you've got to, it's going to take a long time for that person that, man, he's done been living with five women and the one he's got now is not his wife. And, and the first thing we want to think, oh, my God, I can't believe they did that. But you know what? I read a resume of Moses one time and I said, who would like for him to be your pastor? Think about it. Moses killed somebody. Moses, Moses uh, struck, uh, struck the rock instead of spoke to the rock. He, he disobeyed God. I mean, how would you like him to be your pastor? But see, us apostolics, we need to stop thinking that it takes God years to change a man. Well, I think he should prove himself, Brother Hunt. Well, they probably thought that the same thing about the Legion. That's not the same man that was there yesterday. I, I'm scared of him, man. He was cutting people, yelling at people, cussing people. And, but you know, God can change things just like that. We don't have to wait. We don't have time for a lot of waiting no more. If you're waiting on the greatest revival, you missed that yesterday. We are in the greatest revival. This is the end time revival. I believe we're not looking for a revival. We are in the end time revival. I believe right now is a great, you say, why ain't we having, we are having it. Have you not heard? 1,500 got the Holy Ghost over here, 3,000 over here, and it's all over the world. Look how many got the Holy Ghost this year at Carryville. We're not the only churches having that. There's churches every Sunday that are having 15 get the Holy Ghost, 10 get the Holy Ghost, 20 get the Holy Ghost. Uh, there's more than 3,000 like they had in the book of Acts. 3,000, 5,000. There's more than that happening today. But you know what? Sometimes it's not getting it the way we think they should get it. I don't believe in that. I don't, that, ain't, that ain't true. But I'm going to tell you, God can give it any way He wants to get it. I'm not going to judge it. I know we have the evidence of tongues come forth. I know all of that stuff. I'm not trying to debate all of that. But you know what? God can give it if a man wants to cry. When I was growing up, I thought you had to be, you know, snot hanging out of your nose and tears flowing out of your face. And, and then I thought that's the way you had to be before you got the Holy Ghost growing up. And I thought if you wasn't like that, you didn't get the Holy Ghost. But that's not true. I thought you used to have to scream in their ear, Come on! You can get it! Come on! Turn loose! Hold on! 
I thought you had to do that. At one time in my life, I went through that little stage, I thought you had to take their chin and shake it and make them speak in tongues, you know. You ever seen anybody do that? I didn't never do it. I never got into it. I saw it. I thought, man. And it's almost like you just feel and you're, you're so spiritual. I can just shake their chin. They're going to get the Holy Ghost. It might work on somebody. I don't know. But I don't think that's the where it's at anymore. I think sometimes just whisper in her ear and say, you know, God loves you. And he can change your life right now. Hey, you, I may not... I may not be the man that can 100% believe that you, you know, in you, but God does. I, I, know, I know you messed up, buddy, but I'm going to tell you, God's able to change you. And you don't have to wait until, boy, it's really going, it's really going, y'all going to throw a book at me right here. But you don't have to wait until your divorce is final before you give your life to God. I don't believe in divorces, by the way, okay? They do happen, and we have to counsel that, and we have to go forth. But we feel like, I mean, I, I sat at lunch with a man yesterday, had tears coming down his face. He said, I got to do something different in my life. And I looked at him, I said, a man who knows to do good and doeth it not to him is sin. When you know to do what's right and you don't do it, your life can, is, cannot get better. It cannot. God does not bless sin. God does not bless things that you're doing wrong. It's not going to happen. I don't care how much ties you try to pay to make it happen. It ain't going to happen. But when you do what's right, I'm going to tell you the church something. When us apostolics do what's right, God can change you tonight. And you can come in Sunday with a Bible under your arm and say, God has called me to preach. You believe it can happen that fast? I do. Because he looked at his disciples and said, sell what you got, come. He looked at Paul and said, Paul, who, who, and then the Lord said, or Paul looked at him and said, well, what do I got to do with you, Lord? And she, he called him by name and said, why me, God? And God sent him to Ananias' house. I mean, from one day he was persecuting Christians, almost the next day he was trying to change people's lives. Come follow a man who's told me these things, who I was blind. He even told his testimony over and over and over. What I'm trying to tell you tonight is this. You don't have to wait. Well, when I get done with my career, why wait? You can't do your career in Jesus too. Because a lot of times people get in their career, they forget about Jesus before you realize it. You do, you do, you're out of the habit of coming to church. You don't have no more church. Well, when I get on this shift, I'll do better. No, don't wait on that shift. Don't wait on that raise or wait on that new car or that, that husband. When God gives me a godly man, you'll probably find that godly man when you're dedicated to God. The way you're supposed to be dedicated to God. Probably find that godly woman when you're dedicated to the, a God. Come on. That's how you do it. You don't wait until something else comes along. Please hear your pastor tonight. Don't put anything before God tonight. I want you to, what, what you got in your life is between you and God tonight, okay? But I feel led to tell you tonight. Don't wait until 2018 to make a 100% commitment to God. Because I'm going to tell you, if you're waiting, well, when God calls me into this situation, then I do 100%. You won't be 100% in that situation. That situation is not going to last long. It might go good for a little while, but it's not going to last long. And I'm not trying to pin roses on myself tonight when I say this, but I just want to give you an example. Before I became pastor, I was faithful. I was faithful. I mean, I was there at the house of God. I, I helped Brother Creasy. I'd I, I done whatever he needed. I was there. And I believe God uses those that are going to be faithful. You might accidentally fall up and trip up into an area of life, but it's not going to last long if you're not used to not being faithful. Don't wait on tomorrow what you can do today. Because there's no better time than right now. Amen? How many believes we need to reach further than we ever have before in our lives? I want my ministry to be better. I want your ministry to be better. Well, I'm not a minister. Yes, you are. You are a minister. Your husband may be a minister. You need to tighten up. That I'm not trying to, my wife's doing a, the minister's wife's. But if you are a minister's wife, you need to get behind that man. Support him. He's preaching the gospel. Come on, if the word says it and he's following me as a pastor, you need to stop doing it or do it. Come on, obey the word of God. Get behind him. You're going to make or break your husband. Wives, you, your husband needs you. Worship God with him. 
Go out and preach with him. Don't never send your husband out somewhere to preach. Say, I want to go with you to preach. Go preach with wine because you don't want to wait until a chaos has happened before I finally give my life to God. And I know I'm going on and on, but i got to tell somebody this tonight. Hear me. You've waited long enough. You've waited long enough. It's time tonight to make that 100% decision. I'm ready to give God everything I got. I got so much time invested in this church that I can't wait until 2018 to give my life closer to God. I made up my mind this week when I began to think about this, what I was going to talk about tonight. I said, God, I'm not going to wait until 2018 to, to cut this. And I, I've got some things in my life that, that that's not sin. They're just weights. Anybody got any weights in your life? We all should have our hand up tonight. We all got weights in our life. You know what weights do? The Bible said, lay aside every weight and sin that do us so easily beset. He put weights first that do us so easily beset you. The weights of life, they weigh us down. They keep us from coming to prayer meeting. Keeps us from doing what we need to do or keeps us from being faithful to the house of God. Keeps us, come on, I can go on and on and on. Keeps us from giving the way we should give. And we get weighted down with cares of this life that we think that, that I got to do it. I got to hang on to it. Most of the weights in our life, all they do is, is please somebody else anyway. That's all we try to do is please somebody else, look out for somebody else. But I want to encourage you tonight, and I'm done, I promise I'm done. Encourage you tonight. Stop waiting. I feel the Holy Ghost to tell somebody, if you can hear me, the devil's going to try to block you from hearing what I'm about to say. He is. He's going to try to block what I'm about to say right now. But you hear me. You're, you need to stop waiting, and you need to start doing. Stop waiting and start doing. Would you stand with me tonight? Through the crowd of screaming and through the crowd of, of crying and hollering, Jesus, 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 Jesus stood here. Jesus heard blind Bartimaeus and said, send for him. I'm going to ask you tonight, through all the chaos of life that we live in, can you hear Jesus calling you? You don't have to wait tonight. I'm going to pray a prayer, but I want you to come tonight. We're going to do this again Sunday and Sunday and make commitments to God and we're going to go forward, but we're not going to wait till Sunday. How about tonight? Come up tonight and say, God, here I am. And I'm willing, God, and I want to make a commitment to you tonight. I'm not waiting until I graduate. I'm not going to wait until I get the promotion or, or get my new house. I'm not going to wait, God, until this happens. But tonight, I'm going to give my life to you 100%. On this Wednesday night, Brother Hunt? Yeah on this Wednesday night. Lord, I love you. I thank you for these that are walking to this altar tonight. God, I know that life's going to distract some of us and we're not going to be able to do this tonight. But Lord, I pray right now that you would help us to grab a hold of this and realize that we need to stop waiting. We need to let God use us and we need to move forward. God, help us as Christians, God, and saints of God to learn to pray and Learn to fast and learn to seek you early, God. And I pray you help us in our minds, in our hearts. Tonight, God, give us wisdom as we dedicate our life to you all over again. In Jesus' name, thank you, God.
It's called. 